I don't know nobody that don't want to be happy or successful. And if you're hanging around people that won't, that won't be happy or successful, you should get away from them. And, and you got to remember something my daddy told me. Everybody come with you, can't go with you. You can't keep dragging people with you, man. You can't get where God's trying to take you because you're trying to take everybody else with you. Everybody come with you, can't go with you, man. I'm sorry. You know I had to learn this, man? Do you know I was taking people with me, man? Trying to keep it real. My boys in the hood was holding me to that. Man, you got to keep it real, man. Don't forget where you come from. We your homies. Yeah, 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 okay. You got to cut your... You got to cut the cord with some of these people. They holding you down. I'm just trying to give you some piece of advice. I tell people, if you're going to take this road, there's a huge sacrifice that people don't think about. You know, most people think, oh, I'm going to start a company. Two months later, it's going to be worth a billion dollars, and I'm going to be, make a fortune. That is actually not what happens to 99% of people. And the personal sacrifice is huge. There is no soccer game on Saturday. There's no Sunday dinner with the family. You're working because some guy in China or in India or some woman out there is kicking your ass. Don't do it if you don't have the stamina to get kicked around and driven into the ground and get up and do it again and beaten up by people that tell you, this is not Kumbaya stuff, this is hardcore stuff. Everybody ain't happy for you opening your boutique. Oh, she thinks she is gonna open up a damn store. I ain't buying none of that, I ain't telling nobody about it. It's called jealousy. Yeah. It's a more modern term, they're called haters. If you have people in your life who are occupying your time for their self-benefit, you should erase them from your life. Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Kareen Alude. Please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. I made a video before where I stated to you guys, once you level up, you have to walk alone. Once you level up, you will lose friends. You guys, I know the level up journey has been very popular on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, everything like that. Man or woman, whenever you find any form of success in your life, you find that you have to lose a lot of dead weight and a lot of people that you didn't at first consider could be your enemies that you thought was your friends, etc. You're gonna have to cut off a lot of that dead weight. I received an email what inspired this video. I received an email from a young lady was telling me that she's been in nursing school for like a long time. She failed the NCLEX, I think. Sorry, I don't remember. But she failed the exam like the first two times and then finally passed it on her third time. And she had her group of friends who were already all nurses that started off with her that passed the exam the first time. And she, it was a, like a group of three of them, three of her friends plus her. And she was like, she wanted them to celebrate with her. And she felt like the energy just wasn't there. They weren't as happy for her as she expected, especially knowing that she's been trying so long. And it's like one of your friends uh, passing the bar exam, you know, you're gonna celebrate and go out for drinks or whatever. She was like, she got none of that. And so she thought she would have to go through the process of applying for different positions at different hospitals before you know somebody find her because there's no experience or anything and her friends had to go through it. But she immediately found a position at a hospital and you know started working as on bedside. The hospital that she was at was a little bit off of town from where her and her friends were, so the pay was better. And the hours were better, the conditions were better, she wasn't complaining as much as her friends. And she found that when she was giving her friends that news, it was the same exact thing. And by the time she done worked her way up to be like, you know, in charge of all the nurses on the floor at the charge nurse got promoted and you know, while her friends were still doing this and then everybody's true colors show where they just started not inviting her to things. They started not giving her notice. They don't like her post anymore. They don't hit her up as much. And when she just confronted everybody, it's like, oh, you think you all this, you think. And then one of the friends reminded her, you act like it didn't take you three tries to pass it. Why are you acting like that? So it just shows the character and the personality of her friends. It's like, dang she took all this time to pass it she actually passed it and she's doing better than us type of thing but instead it's like this negative energy all just throughout and she was genuinely hurt just hurt about the situation it was like it hurts me i think about it and she was like i've been blessed and i've watched myself just keep working my way up and it took her 11 years 
to cut off those friends. And she's like, yo, I'm always trying to include myself and they're just not happy for me. They're just not, but we all have our story. And she wanted to know how to deal with that hurt in the advice and she has a mistrust for women. And I realized we don't really talk about the trauma of being let down by our friends and the trauma that it leaves on us to where we start to have trust issues with new friends. We always talk about trust issues in relationships, trust issues with family, but with friends, there's like not really much healthy conversation, especially for men. Like men get betrayed by their male friends too. And like they always say, men make friends easier than women and stuff. Like men go through these type of emotions too. They gravitate uh, against them too, where they're not being invited out and they're friends start to act shady or you know whatever the case may be and they're trying to navigate those feelings everybody goes through it and it hurts right you almost feel like if I have any form of success some people change with me if someone blows up overnight that you knew that you were in college with that came from the worst situations and then you see them glow up purchase a nice home nice car making money doing this if you have that kind of energy within you, you could be like, well, dang, okay. If you're not doing nothing with your life and you're not succeeding or elevating and you're still in the same position and you're watching someone obtain those type of things, you can feel salty, everybody feel them, right? You start to feel a little bit of like that green envy coming and then you're like, no, you gotta check yourself. You gotta check it all the time. I always tell you guys that jealousy is a healthy emotion even god has jealousy you know what i'm saying but learning to check it and not let yourself get into the deep end where you succumb to envy to where it becomes it's almost like in a demonic way if i can describe it it consumes you to where you're behaving differently and treating people differently you really have to check yourself right so i check myself and just stop comparing stop looking at numbers stop doing this like just like you know i know how to check myself do you know how to check yourself type of thing but when you have success overnight if i give my story for me i still consider my channel to be a pretty small channel like 176 right because i used to have that comparison mind i'm a very uh, ambitious person so it's like to me i won't feel like i technically like made it until I feel I have like a million subscribers, it's like the goal and then you're like, you made it, right? But I know that I have a larger platform. It's 176,000 people. Imagine if you were standing, if you're standing in front of 100 people, you feel like you're standing in front of a lot. So imagine 176,000, that's a large platform and I'm grateful for it and I feel like I built it, you know, step by step. A lot of people, see me that knew me before, even though I felt like I probably had more money before YouTube. Now they associate this large platform with she must have money. So they already look at you different. People start to treat you different. Like when I had a hundred viewers, I remember I used to have to beg people to like, come to my channel, subscribe, da, 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 da. Like that I'm in my immediate circle, my immediate friends at that time. I'm talking about immediate, can you share? And that used to hurt my feelings. And I used to just be like, why am I not getting the support? It can make you feel a way. And I still kept trucking cause I knew why I was doing it. I loved it. And I always had in me like, I always say this in almost every video when I talk like this, I pray for God to bring me my tribe. The right people find me, you know? So I'm like, the right people will find me even if it's one person. When I would get a one new subscriber, I used to celebrate. Like me and my best friends were like, girl, I reach 101. I did a lot, cause each new person was someone that found me, that resonated with me and that subscribed. You know what I mean? I'd watch members of my family like share people's podcasts to their story or other people's YouTube channels to go subscribe and I wouldn't get it when I was always this person. And I know everybody always says this in their video, like, but I'm the person that would do this and I wouldn't get it in return. But I literally share everybody's stuff. I, I don't have a problem with following people, supporting them, showing my, like I have no desire to be a mean girl. I'm like, I always share and support you guys' stuff. My stuff is not getting the same. And I felt when I 
started asking those questions and figuring that out, I would check myself and my entitlement to where I made myself feel bad for noticing that. And then I'd be like, what makes you think you're entitled for them to reshare or support you or do this or whatever? You know, just grind and do this and blah, 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 blah. This the spoiled mentality, work for what you have. Like I would give myself those talks and kind of suppress that fact that I just saw that. Eventually I started to notice when I reached my first thousand, then I started noticing a little more support. It's like a little bit more where it's like, oh, oh, okay. And I had a video that reached like 5,000 views at the time. I was like, oh my God, you know, celebrating the milestone. And I was thinking everybody for 5,000 views. Then I noticed it's like, you know, but the conversation was, Oh, I see you with your little YouTube. I watch your little channel, girl. I did it. And I'd be like, okay. Do you know there's a tone somebody say it and it's like, okay. Versus there's people that I was like, I love your channel. I watch it that are around me that were always genuinely supporting me. So I'd notice that talk too. I see your little channel, you doing big things. Da, 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 da. By the time I reached 10K subscribers, there were people now that were around me that had also had YouTube channels that, you know, started like asking me that would never talk to me. And instead of saying, wow, I love how you're growing. Is there any tips you could give me to maybe help me with my channel? That's different than you saying, did you buy your subscribers or how did you get all those? What you did to get all your subscribers? Like there's a tone you ask to almost invalidate the hard work that I put in. Like somehow my views have to do with something. I made a lot of mistakes when I first started YouTube. Like now I'd say manage yourself, keep that money in house. If you can use a friend to help out, ask a friend, but figure yourself out. Okay. If it were hire professional help, don't go with these companies. Okay. But, I reached a 10,000 and those were the questions I would get was like, how did you do it? I remember even on my Instagram, cause I had a higher Instagram account than YouTube at the time. And everybody was gathered around and literally asking, how did you get, my pictures are popping more than yours. Like they're this, what is it? I was sitting there like, well, well. Oh, or some girls would literally tell me I look better than you. So. Like, you know, literally, because in, especially in the Haitian culture, uh, people are brutally honest. Let's just say that, you know, or they'll say what they're thinking. So I'd literally have girls. I would be like, but look at my pictures. They look better than you. Like my body, everything, da, da, da. Why don't I have 10,000? I use the hashtags. You don't even use hashtags and stuff. And I felt like I was defending like my greatness what's the word to say for that like you're defending that you're dope and don't sell yourself short like i'm dope like you're my friend you should know that and then if you're my friend you shouldn't talk like that type of thing but you guys don't think i'm like a, a like a wuss you know what i'm saying i know how to catch no shade and cut that out so don't think anybody talked to me like that and we we're just friends and that was slid people that i don't talk to that just felt comfortable to talk to me because i have 10k like that no friend of mine would talk like that. By the time I finally was like at 50K, 60, and I was just, you know, every hard work was being paid off. Yeah, people that never, like, never paid me no mind would come out. Sis, da da da, could you promote this for me? Or could you do this for me? Or how are you, da da? To the point where I was like, yeah, I'm not, like, mm -mm, it's not gonna happen. Cause at first, I was just happy to help people, so I was just doing it. You know, like, I'll share your stuff, I'll do this, oh yeah. And people be like, can I do a video with you just to like promote my channel, dead serious like that. People that never shared my stuff. And I'd be like, yeah, you know? And I I still don't regret those days, I did it. But eventually I was like, yo, no, I got too much work I'm doing and I'm draining myself trying to do this for people that literally never supported me and then it came out to people now trying to be super friendly with you and then of course if you're not reciprocating it because you're genuinely busy you're calling me while I'm recording or something like that like I'm not 
you know, my bestest of friends, you know, hey, Kareen works through the day, this, that. They know what times to call me. So people that never called me before would call, and if I don't pick up, then it's like she's acting brand new, she's fake, she changed, she think her little platform or something. Like, we deal with those. So as mature as someone can appear, like I appear that mature, you deal with the little catty, like, statements from, from the outside world. And then there's also the layers of people that naturally just hate on you because either they were trying to do this and they they saw that you just did it and now they're annoyed with you because like why you or you have the people that that used to like your stuff before that stopped liking your stuff but they're still following they're still lurking watching your stories that won't even that used to tell me I had people that would post happy birthday to me on their own pages on their stories and when I got my little plaque from YouTube all that my birthday came this year and I noticed a reduction and people that I used to always comment, that I used to always like, that I used to always like, the support from them starts to dwindle. I had a friend, I would post all her pictures. She was trying to get into entertainment too and stuff to my story. And I'm like, why you never share mine to your story? Oh, you have so many followers. I didn't think you need it. Cause I really, it's not even about like promotion. Everything don't have to be promotion. Like they'll tag you to something on purpose so you could reshare it to your story so that they can get traction to their page type of thing. They start to see you not as a person, but like as a stepping stone or a means for them to get somewhere. If I'm gonna tag you to something, or if you're gonna tag me to something, it's to help my page. I'm not gonna repost you because you already have the following, where it's like you're not reposting me because I'm your friend, or hey, I like this picture, even if the picture's bomb, the dresses, whatever, you share in the picture, like, you know, it'll be, strangers that show that support you know and i know that sounds small to you guys but you guys have your own experience but all those things to me at that fresh beginning stages because like i said i'm no woods and y'all know i'm intuitive i see through the stuff and i stop it i was like okay i see how it is it's it's a whole bunch of petty stuff that a lot of people who have it deal with like oprah said it's very lonely at the top she, I think she said that. And then it's it's not, you're not even at the top. People don't see the blood, sweat, and tears. All the nights you have to stay up editing, especially if you're doing this by yourself and losing out on social time, losing out on workout time to where, like my first year of YouTube, I think I gained like 40 pounds, legit. I started YouTube at like 125. By the end of the year, I was at 162. Cause it was a lot of sitting, researching, missing out on stuff. And then you still trying to like lose that weight and manage it, but people just see that, oh my God, she got this amount of followers. She's getting love from this person or this and that, whatever. And they're not seeing all that comes with it, you know? People only like you when you're either equal to them or beneath them. When you start climbing up to them, especially if you were down there with them, they will start to feel like the egos will start to feel like weird. You know what I mean? And you have to always check yourself because we've even been guilty of that. If we started somewhere with someone, we see our homegirl get married, then we start to be like, get that little green eye, like, why not me? Why did da, 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 da And then, you know, or she gets this big break, this big opportunity or this whatever, like the nurse was telling us, it, it, it happens like that. You know, just like for men, you finally bought your dream car, your Bentley, you have a business, there's a man plotting on you. Even if you got the girl that everybody wanted in the hood, now you're gonna see your boys are the one that's gonna spread lies that, well, she's actually a hoe, she actually did it, when it's not true, cause they're hating on you. And a lot of times, like I said, I'm not a girl that's like, I don't have friends. I have friends, like people that have done this to me are not in my life, but there's so many genuine women in my life that I'm okay with. And I will always be, and I'm, my heart is still open to new relationships, but it's hard to trust people um, when you reach a point. And the higher you go up, the harder it's gonna be to trust people. But my heart will always be open to new friendships. I'm not afraid to start new friendships. I have started probably, I, Annually, I'll start two new friendships annually, especially since I started YouTube where we'll start off, we follow each other, we generally talk, we meet up, and that's my girl for life. And I'm not closing my heart because of those bad apples, but sometimes you have to start over. You know what I mean? Um, you have to, just like Jesus said, a prophet is not respected in his hometown. 
No one in your home. When you make it, this is why a lot of rappers die in their hood. Because they made it and they still trying to give back to the hood. Leave. You're not loved there. In your hometown, there will be people that knew you that would be like, why her? Why him? Slander you, create stories, and you're going to be on this hamster wheel of trying to please everybody, watching what you say, trying not to do too much, dimming your light, and trying to be as supportive so people don't think you're being stingy, and it's going to drain you, and you're not always going to receive, like I always, I don't expect to receive what I give, like just because I'll sh share someone's stuff, some, an example is basic like that, I'm not looking for them to share me back, I know the game, I know all those stuff, but if I believe in something, like when you support people don't support people just because it's you know like believe in what you're supporting too like if my cousin is a, a alt-right type of person i'm not going to support you just because you're my cousin you know what i'm saying but support people if it's good if they're asking for it and it costs you nothing and it's not something irrational and not just that but try to genuinely be happy for people because that's when your time will come. Every time I had got the green envy eyes and I pray about it, God will tell me the same thing. If you can't be happy for this person, I cannot bless you because you're envious of them and you need to be happy and wait for your turn. Wait for your time and focus on your garden, what you got, because you don't know the sacrifices this person put in to get to this or the demons that they're fighting after. You know what I mean? So even if I don't get the things that I asked for, I still understand and count it as a blessing because I don't know the consequences that will come with it. But that's all I, I say on this topic. I really wanted to talk about that and give my story that people really do change. And a lot of times, even when you're dating, you prefer people to just not know what you do like you know stuff like that even with family you don't talk to them as much because when they talk to you you kind of start to notice that's where like something is going to be asked and expected and it's like you no longer are a person and you may not think what you're doing is great every nurse in the family who was the first to go to school, graduate, every doctor, every lawyer, every engineer, every architect, every astronaut, every like policeman, anyone in the family who's the first to get like a decent job in this, you're basically like the Beyonce of the family. Congratulations, right? And you all know that everyone looks at you different. <laughs> if you come back in the hood, you're the firefighter of the hood, you're like uplifted in that hood like oh man that's my boy i knew him da, da, da. they're gonna attach something to you but if you even come from an affluent home where everybody went to college but you're that doctor that just won a nobel prize or something like that there's a different expert anytime you achieve anything extraordinary there's always a consequence that comes with it so you're gonna be this person that's gonna deal with those things from your peers, from your like, it's gonna be companies compete to the point where they secretly would even have people's life taken out. Like, I'm talking about major companies. I'm not gonna talk about that on the channel, but there's cases of that because it's like, everyone wants to be on top. And there's the price that comes with that. If you're ready to be on top, you gotta be able to sacrifice that whole little bit of social life because ain't nobody gonna be your friend. Even the friends that you make in the industry, ain't no friends. Ain't no friends in these streets. Ain't no friends, okay? And you are gonna have to sacrifice that. You are gonna have to understand when you die, people gonna write books on you. Because everybody that I've done a breakdown for, that's been the case that pissed me off. Somebody did a book on them telling all their business. Look what happened to Whitney, Marlon Brando, Rita Hayworth. All the stories come out when they die from people that was around them. So it's like even the people closest to you will capitalize off of you if they can. Okay, And you may feel like you're entitled to help pick everybody up when you get one bit of success but everybody has the same amount of hours in this world as you do to make something of themselves you can give someone an opportunity but don't spoon feed them don't hold their hands because it's not your responsibility like breathe and understand that 
in this level up world you have to walk alone sometimes it's gonna be lonely but if you have at least two three good people in your corner it's definitely worth it and you will find joy you don't need a large crowd you don't need a lot of people find joy within yourself learn to be content alone and learn to be content with the few people you have and if you really have nobody the sincerest advice i can give is to pray that god brings somebody to you god really listens to those prayers you know like he will bring somebody to you and believe it believe it there's a person out there that you're gonna that's gonna help you out through it because we all do need somebody to lean on <laughs> but that's all i have to say for this video i love you guys so much please comment below more topics you guys want me to talk about until next time Bye.